Hi right, guys, um, let's continue discussing uh, alloys. Okay, last time we talked about, you know, uh, alloy, we have uh, ferrous alloy and the non-ferrous alloy. Uh, for ferrous alloy, you know, we have this uh, steel, you know, if the carbon concentration is uh, less than 1.4%. And uh, for cotton air, uh, you know, when we have the common concentration is, you know, between 2.14 and 4.3. So today we will discuss more about the cotton airs, you know, actually in reality, generally the, the common concentration is between 3, 3.5 and uh, 4.5%. 4, 4 uh, for steel, last time we discussed it, you know, we have this uh, low alloy uh, and also high alloy. So low alloy, you know, we have we have three categories, right? Low carbon steel, you know, if the carbon concentration is less than uh, 0.25%. For medium carbon, you know, we the, the carbon concentration is between 0.25 and 0.68%. For high carbon, you know, we have this 0.6 and 1.48%. So generally from low carbon to medium carbon to high carbon, um, because you know you have more impurity atoms in air, right? So that means the tensile strength, you know, hardness will increase, but you know, ductility will get worse, right? Uh, last time we also talked about you know plane. So what is plane? Plane means you know uh, we have plane uh, low carbon plane steel, you know, medium carbon uh, uh, plane steel, you know, high carbon plane steel. That means you know you do not add any other impurity atoms on purpose, but you know, you just have some residue, you know, impurity atoms and, you know, like a copper, like a nickel, some other element, uh, alloy element, right? So apparently when you put more uh, impurity atom, elements, you know, all alloy elements, you know, the tensile strengths, you know, yield strengths, and, uh, tensile strength, yield strengths, and hardness will increase, but ductility will get worse, okay? So let's move forward to, um, how to uh, how to name uh, see. how to name how to name you know uh, different steels okay so we have this you know we have um, two name systems you know we have this AISI that means you know American Iron and Steel uh, Institute. And SEA means, you know, Society of uh, automo uh, Automobile, you know, uh, Engineers. Okay, so generally we just use this AISI just in case you guys are uh, confused, okay? So we use this, this AISI, you know, American Institute of, uh, American, uh, American Iron and Steel Institute, okay? So if you look at a steel, you may have this uh, four digit number, like this one is a 10, 20. So this uh, four digit, you know, we need to divide it into two parts. The first of two digit means, you know, the category of steel. You can see, you know, we have 10 something, you know, 23 something, 40 something, 50, 20, uh, 72. So 10 means in a plain, plain carbon steel. Okay, plain common steel. 23 means you know, nickel steel. That means, you know, plain, you know, we do not add, you know, uh, uh, impure uh, alloy element in, in it, right? So just a residue um, alloy element in steel. So 23 means nickel, uh, nickel based steel, you know, uh, uh, kind of um, Actually, 23 or 22, 21, you know, we have nickel based, but you know, the nickel uh, amount in your steel, you know, is different. Okay. So, for the series, you know, we may have 41, 42, you will see more examples. Okay. For the series, you know, means uh, molybdenum mal steel, you know. So, this one, we add a lot of, um, at least, you know, big amount of uh, molybdenum in, in it. 50 series, you know, we, ha we have this uh, chromium, you know, we put more chromium in it. Okay, so it's a chromium steel. 72 is a tungsten chromium steel, okay. So that means, you know, the first two data indicating the category of alloy, 
okay, alloy uh, element. <clears throat> the last two J-layers means, you know, uh, remember, you know, when we talk about steel, you know, we have different uh, common concentration. So the, the last two digits means, you know, the concentration of, of weight percentage of carbon in the steel, okay? So this 20 knot means, you know, 20% carbon, that's too much, right? Remember when we focus on iron carbon phase diagram, we just uh, focus on this, you know, the carbon concentration less than 4.3 weight percent. So definitely this 20 doesn't mean, you know, 20%, it's too much, okay? So it means, you know, 20 divided by 100, so it will be uh, 0.2 weight percent carbon. Like, you know, another example, like, you know, if we have something, you know, 45, that means, you know, it's 0.45 weight percent. Okay, so this is a 45 divided by 100, it will be 0.05, so weight percent, okay. So this is a uh, common, com uh, common con uh, carbon weight percentage. Another example is, you know, we have AISI, you know, 1060 steel. So that means we are talking about, you know, plain carbon steel, right? The common concentration is a 0.6 weight percent. So remember this is a 0.6, it's right on the line, you know, of medium carbon uh, uh, and high uh, carbon, uh, carbon, right? So it's a 0.6 weight percent. Uh, you can see uh, more examples, you know, we uh, we have this uh, 40%, uh, 40, the first two days of 40 means, you know, uh, nickel steel, uh, uh, molybdenum steel, right? 40 means uh, molybdenum steel. So you may have like a 40, 41, 43, you can see the major, the major alloy element, you know, it's a, a molybdenum, okay, molybdenum. Uh, so, 40 series and the 50 series, you know, we talk about in the chromium uh, uh, steel, right? So we, we have more chromium, but we have, we do not add a nickel in it. We do not add a molybdenum, but we may have some other uh, uh, alloy, uh, alloy element depends, you know, what kind of a uh, uh, property you want to have, right? You may, you may put the, uh, more uh, alloy element in it. Okay, so like this uh, 10 is a plain uh, carbon, right? Like uh, 11, uh, you know, free machine unit is easy to machine. And we have this 13, see all this, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we do not have, we do not add nickel, chromium or moly in it, right? But we do uh, put some other, uh, alloy element in it, like a sulfur, like a phosphor, like a manganism, right? Ma manganese. So depends what kind of uh, property you want to have, right? So this is uh, the, the name, uh, the name of uh, different uh, steels, you know, you guys need to, uh, basically you need to know uh, uh, like this uh, several examples, you know, the, 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 the moly steel, nickel steel, chromium steel, and also uh, when you have a name, you know, with a four digits and from this AISI, you need to know what's a carbon concentration in it, right? Um, so this is two steel. Uh, if you remember right, uh, remember, you know, uh, for two steel, uh, two steel could be, you know, uh, high carbon alloy, right? High carbon steel. It may be, you know, uh, uh, high alloy. Um, high alloy you know, as well, you know, see, this is a two steel. So it, it uh, could be, you know, high alloy steel and also could be high carbon steel, okay? So like, you know, when we talk about the high carbon uh, uh, steel, you know, we know the carbon concentration, uh, the carbon weight percentage should be over 0.6%. So you can see this, you know, carbon, uh, weight percentage is a point, uh, point eight, and you know one percent, one point five percent, you know point nine percent, one point one percent. So this one is you know kind of even we do not have carbon weight percentage more than 06 percent, but we we can add more alloy element in it, right? See this one, we have you know uh, two point 
2.25 with percentage of tungsten in it. So this is uh, uh, high, uh, high alloy uh, uh, to steel, okay. Uh, apparently, you know, here we, we just, uh, we, we talk about, you know, chromium, nickel, moly, tungsten, uh, vanadium, some others, you know, depends, you know, what kind of uh, alloy element you put in it, then you will have different alloy, then uh, uh, you will have different, uh, this each element has different uh, function. But, you know, this two steel is really hard. It's really strong, you know, remember, uh, think about, you know, if you have a, a million bits, if it's not hard enough, so you want to mill, you want to mill a piece of uh, wood, a piece of uh, aluminum. So if your drilling bit or milling bit is really, it's not that hard, it's really soft, right? So finally, then your drilling bit will 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 be will be flattened, will be uh, wear out quickly, right? But you know. You want to cut, you know, this uh, stainless steel plates, you know, aluminum is it's nothing uh, happened there, right? So we need to, that's why, you know, for two steel, generally we use high carbon, make sure it's really strong, really hard, then we can cut other uh, materials, right? Okay, regarding the, the function of uh, alloying elements, you know, um, here is a list of different elements we have, uh, but I encourage you guys, you know, uh, to know uh, uh, elements highlighted here. So for chromium, we know, I think it's easy to uh, understand, you know, when we put some uh, chromium in steel, uh, it may become a uh, stainless steel, right? That, when we talk about the stainless steel, that means it has really good uh, uh, corrosion resistance, right? So, but you know, it doesn't mean, you know, when you put some chromium in it, you will have this good, you know, corrosion resistance. So you have to have enough amount of chromium in it. Otherwise, you know, it, 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 the, it has some corrosion resistance, but you know, it, it cannot, cannot last long. Okay, so for chromium, uh, generally, if you put a small amount of chromium in that in steel, you will increase the hardenability. Hardenability that means you know the, you can harden, you can harden. You know, originally it's, the material is is soft. If you put some chromium in it, then the hardness will increase. You know, kind of you harden these materials when you put chromium in it. Uh, so if you want to put, have really good, you know, corrosion resistance, you know, uh, we can put some chromium between like four per weight percent and 18 weight percent. Actually, uh, in the next few slides, we will talk about stainless steel. Uh, we have that 304 stainless steel. We have that 316 stainless steel. So actually we put more uh, uh, chromium in it. So generally, probably around 17% and 19%, uh, you will see uh, those numbers, okay? But you know, generally, if you want to increase, in, increase, you know, corrosion resistance, you need to put uh, uh, chromium, you know, with, with percentage of uh, 4%, more than 4%, four, uh, 4%. But if you want to have, if you want to fabricate stainless steel, you have to put more, okay? For copper, uh, so this one copper has, you know, good, you know, uh, corrosion resistance as well. Uh, uh, lead, you know, if you put in, uh, put some lead in it, you will improve improve machinability. That means, you know, the material will be easy to machine. Uh, so kind of uh, you can change the the the, the mechanical pro uh, properties as well. Uh, for molybdenum, this this is the interesting uh, uh, function uh, or alloy elements. Uh, you know, this molybdenum. You know, because you know when we have when we talk about carbon, we have some carbon in it. When you put molybdenum in it, it will it may form stable carbide. You know, uh, moly carbide. Okay. Once you have this moly carbide, it will inhibit the green growth. So. Uh, kind of, you know, uh, you have you have green, right? So based on what kind of heat treatment you give, it's a green might grow, right? Remember, when the green is getting bigger, ductility will better, but you know, strength and uh, hardness will get worse, right? So 
when you put this a uh, moly in it, you will have this uh, moly carbide. This moly carbide will limit green growth. So that means you know your uh, your uh, your green will be smaller. So that means you, you will improve the uh, strength and. Uh, Actually, when you reduce the green size, you you may increase the uh, hardness uh, as well, uh, the, the toughness as well. Um, so this is uh, this is uh, the uh, the molly, and when you put some nickel, uh, it the steel will be tougher, and you can increase the corrosion resistance. Like you know, uh, the engine blades, you know, we have a large amount of nickel. It's nickel alloy, right? Uh, for silicon. Uh, depends how many silicon you give. You know, if you put uh, like a two percent, you know, generally for the spring, you know, for the spring steel, you know, we we put some like uh, silicon in it. But if you put a large amount of silicon, you know, because it's a silicon, the uh, atomic number is a fourteen. The out outer layer, you know, we have four electrons. So. This one has, you know, the magnetic uh, property. It's a really good, you know, semiconductive uh, materials, uh, like you know, uh, the, the the data storage, you know, the digital storage. You know, we need to have this magnetic properties. So, uh, silicon. This is a silicon. Uh, Thomson. Uh, I think uh, everybody knows. You know, Thomson has really high uh, melting temperature, more than three thousand degrees Celsius. So definitely, if you put some uh, uh, tungsten in it, you will increase the melting point. That's why you know Edison, you know, uh, invents you know the 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 the, the filaments uh, filament for the bomb, right? So the first material is the tungsten, right? Because the other materials, you know, before it uh, glow uh, glows, you know, the the filaments is already burned out, right? Okay, so um, let's talk about uh, um, stainless steel. Um, so for the stainless stainless steel, you know, we have uh, uh, three hundred series. You know, we have four hundred series. You know, but generally we will focus on this uh, two because we use this two kind of uh, stainless a lot. Okay, so we have this three o four. We have this three o four. Generally, we have uh, this you know point on o eight with percentage uh, on carbon. So that means uh, it's a low carbon steel, right? Less than 025 percent. So this is a low carbon steel, but you know we put you know nineteen percent chromium and nine uh uh nineteen percent chromium and nine percent nickel and two percent magnesium, manganese. Okay. So kind of this is a high alloy, right? Nineteen percent and nine uh, percent. So then we will have this three o four stainless steel, and also uh, we we need to anneal. Uh, you know, we will talk about anneal uh, uh, a little bit more uh, in the following slides. So this uh, stainless steel will have this uh, FCC uh, austenite. Aust Tannic uh, structure, you know, austenite will help FCC crystal structure, but the ferrite will help BCC crystal structure. So this one has FCC crystal structure. Um, so depends how do you treat it. You know, generally we have this, you know, uh, five hundred, you know, uh, uh, tensile strength. You know, we have forty percent ductility. So kind of uh, this uh, stainless steel, we have good, you know, uh, tensile strength and also uh, ductility. So this uh this is three sixteen uh oh this is three o four we 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 have a lot of applications like uh kind of for uh for chemical tank and you know food processing equipment you know uh vessels you know we have a lot of applications for this is three sixteen you know uh like you met uh we have we we use a three sixteen to uh, fabricate like a tubes you know rods. Uh, like in my lab, we have that uh, gas, uh, gas, uh, gas tubes. Uh, so we use the three sixteen a lot. So for this three sixteen, we have uh, seventeen percent chromium and twelve percent nickel and two point five uh, moly. But I encourage you guys to uh, memorize, you know, the 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 weight percentage of chromium and nickel. Okay. So three o uh, three sixteen is seventeen uh, chromium and twelve uh, percent. 
seventy percent chromium, the twelve percent nickel. So it has really good tensile strength as well, good ductility. So that means it's easy to uh, to uh, change and the, the you can bend it like in my lab. You know we have uh, that the tube. We can bend it. We can change like ninety degrees. That's no problem. So we have this uh, two uh, stainless steel. Uh, actually, you know the 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 tensile strength, the yield strength, the ductility depends on the combination, right? Depends on the condition, kind of. Uh, after you fabricate this uh, tube, you know plate, you know uh, film, how do you perform heat treatment like uh, annealing, uh, like a uh, quenching? Uh, so, and also even for kneading, you know, you use a uh, different uh, process, uh, process, uh, if you follow different process, you may get different uh, tensile strength, yield strength and ductility, okay. Okay, so kind of uh, this, uh, this is um, the summary for the uh, ferrous alloy, you know, again, we have this uh, low alloy, we have this uh, high alloy, low alloy, we have, you know, we have low carbon, you know, we have medium carbon, we have high carbon. Uh, for each of them, you know, we have plain, that means we, we just have some residue alloy uh, element in it, right? So I don't know whether you guys still remember this one, it's uh, HSIOA, that means the high strength, low uh, alloy, right? Uh, and this is heat treatable kind of you put some alloy element element you, then you will uh, improve the, the, the mechanical performance right and also this is a, a, a applications like a, a for the low carbon plane you know we can uh, fabricate you know a, a vehicle you know if we need a, a steel like a nails and wires you know there's a high strength a low alloy you know we can uh, fabric the tower, you know, presses or vessels. This uh, uh, medium carbon, we, we have that, you know, uh, railway, you know, wheels, you know, uh, 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 hammers, you know, something, you know, you can see this, uh, the application, you know, kind of like in, when you, when you guys, you know, uh, have that capital design, when you see like a different materials, you know, you need to think about, you know, what kind of material you are going to use, you know, depends, you know, what's the, uh, what kind of mechanical property you want to have, right? Then you can select different materials because, you know, when you when you have this uh, low carbon, medium carbon, high carbon, when you put some alloy elements, you know, remember the mechanical performance will increase definitely, right? But, you know, the cost will, uh, will increase for sure, right? So we have to balance, you know, uh, the mechanical pro properties and also the cost. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, when you increase the uh, alloy element, when you increase carbon in it, you know, the tensile strength, you know, the yield strength, hard heat will increase. But remember, uh, the ductility will get worse, right? Uh, for the high alloy, you know, uh, we talk about, you know, the, the stainless steel, we, we will focus on this the 304, 316. Uh, uh, so we need to know what's a, a weight percentage for nickel and the chromium. Uh, so we finish. We we finish. You know, uh, discussing. You know, the the steel. You know, the carbon concentration less than uh, one point four percent. Now we will move forward to cast air. So generally, you know, when the carbon concentration is between two point fourteen and the four point three weight percent, we call that cast air. But in, in reality, you know, we just uh, uh, most of uh, cast air. You know, we put. Uh, the common concentration, uh, you know, in between, you know, three point, three point zero percent and four point five percent. Okay. So this uh, cast air, you know, it's uh, uh, it's easy to cast. You know, cast means uh, you 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 can melt your your uh, I, your uh, your materials, right? Then you pour into uh, into a, a mold. Then after a solid vacation, you will have that uh, structures, right? So generally, this uh, generally this uh, cast air is really brittle. So because you know, uh, if you have less carbon, right? So the tensile strength, yield strength is um, is not that high, but you know it has really good ductility. But once you put more carbon in it, you know, uh, the tensile strength will be really high. Uh, like you know, uh, 
mm, it's really high, then it will become brittle because you know you lost the ductility. That's why you know because you know we put more carbonate, it will become stronger. But you know then the the ductility will get worse. You know finally it's really brittle. Uh, actually, for this brittle, you know there's uh, some other reasons. You know the 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 reason is you know because you know. We have this, uh, uh, suppose, you know, in this region, we have cementite, we have this cementite uh, here as well. But, you know, cementite actually is not stable. It's a metal stable, you know, when you increase temperature or if you keep at a high temperature quite a long time, it will decompose, okay? It will form, you know, air and uh, carbon. So air will be ferrite, okay? Carbon will be, graphite. So that means that this uh, uh, iron carbide will become ferrite and graphite. So then that's the reason, you know, why uh, uh, the, 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 the cast iron is, uh, you know, is uh, brittle. So based on this one, so based on this reaction, we can change, you know, the iron carbon uh, uh, face diagram a little bit, you know, in this region, we have uh, gamma phase, you know, austenite plus graphite. Uh, in this region, we put, you know, ferrite, you know, plus uh, uh, graphite rather than, you know, cementite. Okay, so this reaction, this, uh, this uh, because uh, uh, cementite is not stable, uh, so that means, you know, we need to, if you really want to, if you want to get a cementite, we need to really be careful heat treatment, okay? You need to be careful the temperature you select and also how long you will treat it. Otherwise, you know, you may get, you may not get this cementite, but graphite, okay? Uh, especially when you put more carbon, you know, uh, then the, 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 um, the, the uh, driving force, you know, to change the cementite into ferrite and the graphite will be higher. Okay, so there are some uh, uh, several factors, you know, which can promote, you know, the graphic, uh, graphic decomposition. Uh, so if you put some silicon, silicon in it, you know, uh, like you know, the si silicon percentage is more than one percent, so it will promote this uh, graphitization. And also, if if you slow this uh, cooling, uh, if you have slower cooling rate, so kind of you keep at a higher temperature longer, so that will facilitate you know the conversion uh, from cementite into graphite. So that means that if you want to get a cementite, you need to you know have a faster uh, cooling rate. Okay. So so this is uh, the the. The conversion of cementite into ferrite and uh, graphite, uh, and uh, when we have this uh, cast iron, okay, depends you know how fast you cool it down, okay, uh, then you may you may uh, you may get uh, uh, and also depend on what kind of heat treatment you follow, so you may get a different uh, cast irons. Uh, the first uh, cast air is uh, we call that uh, uh, gray gray air. So this one, you know, uh, you have moderate cooling, you may get a perlite and graphite. If you have slow cooling, you may get a ferrite uh, graphite. Uh, I want to address, you know, what's the difference? Why, you know, when we have this moderate cooling, uh, uh, we have that uh, perlite, you know, graphite. When we have this uh, slow cooling, then we have ferrite graphite. Okay, so you can look at uh, look at this uh, uh, microstructure. You know, we know perlite. You know, we have alternative, you know, uh, 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 perlite and uh, cementite, right? Assume you know the 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 brown, you know, uh, is a perlite. You know, uh, uh, we. Uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, perlite, right? No, perlite is uh, alternative, you know, ferrite in the cementite, right? So we have this uh, perlite. Uh, if you kind of mo have moderate cooling, so this uh, perlite, the microstructure will not be damaged. But if you have slow cooling, 
Uh, this uh, black stuff, you know, is a graphite, right? Black stuff is a graphite, this is a perlite. But if you have, you know, slow cooling, because, you know, perlite is composed of uh, uh, ferrite and the cementite, right? Uh, re remember cementite, if you keep at a high temperature quite long, cementite is not stable. So the cementite here will change into ferrite and uh, uh, graphite, right? So that means, you know, the, the, uh, the, the black stuff, you know, it's the graphite that is getting bigger. So all graphite from perlite will join into this uh, graphite, join, join this uh, uh, graphite. So the left, uh, the, the left will be a ferrite only. So that's why, you know, when you have moderate, moderate cooling, so you have perlite here, you know, graphite here, because you do not give enough time for graphite in, uh, for the uh, uh, cementite in perlite to decompose. That's why you have cementite in it. That's why you keep, you have, you know, perlite after this uh, uh, cooling, right? But if you go to slow cooling, the, fire, uh, the cementite here will decompose. So then the carbon will join this uh, graphite. So you have more graphite here. The left will be ferrite uh, only, right? So that's why you have, if you have slow cooling, you have ferrite and graphite. Okay, so this is the difference. <clears throat> so the microstructure will, you have, have some flake graphite in it. You know, we call that a cone flake. So this uh, flake will be uh, will surrounded by either ferrites or perlite. Depends how do you cool it down, right? If you have slow cooling, so you have perlite. If you have if you have moderate cooling, you have this uh, perlite. If you have slow cooling, you have this uh, ferrite. <coughs> so you guys need to be, be careful. So uh, uh, you should be able to give you know different macro structure depends what kind of cooling rate. So this uh, microstructure is a uh, weak and brittle. Um, so you can see, you know, the kind of uh, this uh, graphite is uh, needle-like. You know, you you when you give load, you know, it will result stress conditioning in it. Okay. But you know, this uh, uh, gray area, you know, has really good, uh, you know, uh, vibration uh, damping damping uh, capability. <coughs> Excuse me. A vibration damping capabilities. That's why you know, if you go to your Crosby, you have that uh, lathe. You know, have big machine. You know, the bottom is made of you know uh, this green air. It's, it has really good vibration damping capability. Okay. Uh, another another cast iron is a ductile uh, ductile you know iron. We we also call this nodular iron. Again, you know, if you have this uh, moderate uh, cooling, you have, the microstructure will be perlite plus graphite. If you have this slow cooling, you have this uh, ferrite plus uh, graphite. But remember uh, this one, this uh, ductile iron, we, we put some magnesium and the serum. So this uh, element will induce the, uh, the, uh, the uh, morphology change of graphite. So morphology of, uh, uh, Graphite will change to like a sphere particle lag. So uh, that's the only difference because, you know, uh, ductile iron, we put some uh, magnesium and the serum in it. So the carbon morphology is different. Okay. Uh, we have another one, uh, a cast iron, we call that a white iron. You know, probably you guys uh, know it. So generally to get this uh, wet air, you know, uh, we, we have this uh, faster cooling. We do not perform, you know, uh, uh, moderate cooling or slow cooling. We have this uh, faster cooling. So faster cooling, you know, you will, the, micro, the final microstructure will be perlite plus cementite. <coughs> uh, because, you know, when you have faster cooling, you do not give enough time for cementite to decompose into ferrite and graphite. So that's why when you have this uh, faster cooling, the ma final microstructure will be, you know, perlite plus cementite. Okay. 
So this uh, microstructure is extremely hard and brittle. Uh, another uh, constant error we uh, it is a malleable error. This one, uh, this one we reheat, reheat you know, wet air. So they are, so that means if you want to get this uh, malleable air, you have to get a uh, wet air first. So you have faster cooling. Then you reheat. Then after you reheat at 700 degrees Celsius. So you can perform either faster cooling, uh, then you will get a perlite plus a graphite. Or you can perform slow cooling, you will get this uh, ferrite uh, plus a graphite. Uh, so this one is similar to uh, you know, when we were in phase uh, transformation in chapter 10. Uh, if you want to get a sephora that you know you have got a uh, perlite and vanite first and then you can reheat it right this is similar so if you want to get this uh, malleable iron you have to uh, get a wet iron first and then you perform reheat at around you know uh, uh, 700 degrees Celsius uh, then you can perform faster cooling uh, then you will get a, a perlite plus a graphite uh, uh, all uh, slow cooling, you get a ferrite uh, plus a graphite. Okay. Uh, another one, uh, the last uh, cousin here is a compact graphite uh, iron. So this one, uh, the graphite is uh, in a special morphology. It's kind of worm-like, you know, shape of graphite. Uh, so uh, generally, if you put some uh, silicon in it, it will promote the morphology change of a graphite. So this one, uh, this one has really good strength and ductility. So uh, this is the cast air. You know, we have uh, green air, we have nodded air, we have wet air, we have malleable air. Uh, uh, we have this uh, compact uh, 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 gra graphite uh, air CGI. So we need to know the morphology. Uh, the morphology, you know, for the green air, we have some, you know, flake uh, graphite in it. it. Depends of moderate cooling or, or, or slow cooling. We make as you know, perlite and plus graphite and uh, uh, ferrite plus graphite. For another one, we have the sphere graphite, and also we have that uh, wet air. You know, we have uh, faster cooling uh, for that. Uh, uh, malleable, uh, uh, malleable, malleable air. You know, we we after we get the wet air, we can perform a faster cooling and the slow cooling. We we can get a perlite graphite and uh, ferrite graphite, right? So this is the summary of a production of a cast airs. You know, uh, we talk about you know when we talk about cast air in reality, we. We talk about you know, the common uh, width percentage is between you know 3.0 and 4.5 percentage width percentage, and uh, <clears throat> so the first one when we have cast air you know we depends you know faster cooling or moderate cooling or slow cooling so we have faster cooling we can get a wet air so we have perlite you know plus uh, uh, plus you know cementite if we have moderate cooling. Uh, uh, if we have moderate cooling and slow cooling, uh, we will get uh, uh, gray uh, air. So for this wire, uh, wet uh, cast air, we can um, reheat, and then we can get a malleable, uh, malleable uh, cast air, right? And if we, we if we put some uh, magnesium, magnesium, and magnesium and cerium, we can get this uh, uh, nodular, nodular, you know, uh, cast air. <clears throat> okay, so for ferrous alloy, <clears throat> uh, uh, we have some uh, advantages, you know, and also definitely there are some disadvantages, right? Everything has a double size. So this uh, ferrous alloy is uh, there's a lot of in uh, Earth's crust, you know, we can get it easily. It's uh, for economic reason, it's really cheap. Right, so it's really easy to fabricate. You can form welding, machining. You know, we will talk about the forming, how to form. You know, and also versatile. You can add different alloy elements. Uh, then it will have different mechanical pro pro properties. 
Uh, disadvantage, disadvantage is for ferrous alloy because you know iron the density is 7.9 uh, uh, gram per uh, cubic centimeters. So it's high density means really heavy uh, and also this one you know has really poor corrosion resistance and also the electric electric uh, electrical conductivity is really poor. So uh, in addition to this uh, ferrous alloys, we have some uh, non ferrous alloy. You know we will talk about right now. So for non for non ferrous alloy, uh, we have generally we will uh, we will focus on copper alloys, titanium alloys, aluminum alloys, and mechanism uh, mechanism alloys. So you can see the the uh, uh, the different ages, right? We have stone age, we have bronze uh, bronze age, we have iron age, right? So you can see uh, human found you know the bronze and you know, use the bronze first. Uh, probably, you know, because, you know, uh, copper is, uh, you know, the major element is copper, right? Copper is, e uh, is uh, easy to uh, machine and it's easy to refine. You can get copper easily, then you can put some other element like a zinc, like a tin, in it, you have different alloys. And in ancient time, you know, in, uh, in uh, like in bronze age, you know, you, you, you can, you can have this bronze, you know, helmet, you have different structure, you can uh, uh, footwear, you know, a lot of structures in a sword, and you, you can put some element in it, you can change the mechanical properties, right? So this uh, uh, that's the uh, bronze age. So actually the, the major reason to uh, for copper uh, alloys, you know, uh, the copper alloys uh, finds a lot of uh, ab applications because you know, it's a face diagram, right? So copper face diagram, if you put some zinc, you know, uh, you, you, you have different, uh, you have a lot of, you know, uh, uh, phase field, you know, phases, you know, then if you have different phases, uh, that means you can uh, have different properties, you can have different applications, so like, you know, for bronze, if you, can, you can put some tin, you can put some zinc, you can put aluminum and nickel. So then you can find the application like uh, to fabricate the uh, bearings and gears, you know, like in you know, Olympic medals, you know, the so surface medal is made of uh, bronze, right? And also for brass, you know, you can put some zinc in it, you have this brass, you know, this guy has a lot of applications in the music instrument, right? Um, so uh, titanium alloy, you know, the, the, uh, the the beauty part is, you know, titanium has really low uh, um, density. That means it's really light. And the titanium, titanium alloy has really high, we call that a strength to weight ratio. That means, you know, the strength, you know, probably the, the absolute strength, you know, if you compare, you know, steel uh, and uh, titanium, you know, titanium is, cannot be the steel, but, you know, remember steel, the major element is the iron, the density is 7.9. But this for this uh, titanium the, uh, density is a four point five, so that means you know the advantage for this titanium alloy you know it has really high strength to weight ratio, okay, and uh, also this uh, titanium has a lot of applications in aircraft structures, space crafts you know implant because we need to reduce the weight right, uh, for economic reason, uh, but you know definitely the titanium alloy is re really expensive right. So that's why we will use it, you know, if we, we, want, we, we, we want to reduce the weight like aircraft, right? So you can see uh, in the aircraft, there's uh, several structures, you know, we, need, we can find, you know, the application of titanium alloy. Another major application is the uh, um, artificial uh, part, right? Like uh, uh, if, you, if someone uh, needs to replace a bone, you know, we can use this titanium because this one has really good corrosion resistance and also bio compatibility, right? So you don't want to see, you know, when you use this part, you know, it's a degrees, you know, generate some debris, you know, uh, in, in your body. So it's, 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 it will be really bad, right? So this titanium has really good, you know, uh, corro corrosion resistance and also, um, it has really good, you know, uh, strength and hardness. You know, it's um, it's really hard to wear out this this guy, right? <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, alumina alloy, you know, uh, we know the aluminum density is uh, on, uh, only 2.7, it's really less, you know, uh, I think it's on only one third, um, one third of uh, steel. So this one has really good resistance and uh, it, uh, alumina alloy, I find a lot of application in aircraft and, and also uh, uh, in civil engineering, like a bicycle. Uh, you know, one, one worst case, you know, I ride the bicycle like this. So this is a pretty highway. The frame, uh, the rim, you know, uh, uh, rims you know, are made of, uh, were made of uh, steel. So it's really heavy. So this is a fancy bicycle, you know, probably we have carbon in it. You know, we have uh, aluminum high high strength uh, aluminum alloy. It's really light, right? But you know, probably this guy is uh, three times heavier than this one. So I remember, you know. When I was kidding, uh, I was in middle school. Uh, I ride a bicycle to uh, to school, so I I, I hate you know uh, a raining day because you know the road is uh, uh, is muddy. It's not you know uh, concrete you know or sandy road. You know, I ride you know, during the sunny day. You know, I can ride a bicycle to school, but it's a uh, raining day. You know, the road is really muddy. I cannot ride a bicycle, so I have to carry it back. Remember. This this frames and rims are made of a steel, uh, steel, right? So it's a three times higher. You know, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's kind of it's a, uh, I I believe it's a uh, it was a good exercise and work hard. Yeah. Uh, and also aluminum. You know, we have this aluminum foil. Uh, we have definitely you guys know this. You know, it's uh, easy to deform. Uh, it's easy to fabricate. It's uh, definitely. It's, Aluminum alloy has a lot of applications. So this, uh, this, uh, the uh, mechanical properties of aluminum depends. You know, uh, how do you, uh, what kind of um, uh, forming uh, strategy you use? Uh, depends what kind of uh, uh, heat treatment you have. You may get different uh, strengths. You know, uh, yield strengths, tensile strengths, and also ductility. Okay. Uh, the last uh, alloy is uh, magnesium alloy. Is, uh, magnesium is uh, much lighter, right? Com even compared to aluminum, so the density is only uh, 1.7, but magnesium is uh, it's easy to uh, uh, to be ignited. Uh, but you know, because this one is really uh, light, you know, we have a lot of application in aircraft parts, in the missiles, you know, because you, you, you for the missiles. Uh, you can put a, you know, limit is a few in it, right? Definitely the lighter you can, uh, it can fly far, uh, further, right? So, uh, and also like a DOD, you know, you can, uh, we, we do not calculate cost, you know, we just uh, make sure it's, it works, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of fly further, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's why, you know, we, we can use, you know, expensive magnetism in it, right? And also, like if you uh, drive a fancy car, you know the rims. You know, uh, you may you may have the you know magnetism alloy. Um, Ignite easily means you know the magnetism itself. You know, but when you uh, have alloy, you know, it's, you stabilize it. You know, it should be it should be okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, other alloys, and we we can talk about, talk about a little bit uh, a little bit more about you know uh, uh, noble. Uh, uh, Elements, you know, we we have this, you know, the the, the easiest thing we can uh, we come up, you know, is uh, like uh, Olympic medals, right? We have gold medals, silver medal, uh, bronze medal. Even this gold medal is not uh, it's not made hundred percent gold. You know, each medal uh, is a uh, 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 five hundred gram. You can see this uh, the gold percentage is only one point two percent. It's only six gram in gold medals. Uh, silver metal 100% uh, silver and uh, actually the purity right so re remember there's the purity purity means you know you still have some residue element in it so uh, then if you have pure 100% uh, you know uh, silver in it it will be really soft you know because you have some residue element in it it's, it's a stronger because it's a solid solution right remember uh, bronze you know we have this uh, copper you know 95% is a uh, copper and also, uh, you can see the value of uh, gold medals, you know, silver medal, uh, bronze medal. So gold medal, it it worth you know five hundred more than five hundred fifty around five hundred fifty dollars. You know, silver medal uh, around three hundred dollars. You know, bronze medal is only two dollars. 
So think about you know the 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 uh, the Olympic players, you know, the players, you know, they spend uh, years effort, you know, to uh, achieve higher and you know further stronger, but finally if they get you know this bronze, it's only two dollars, right? But you know, we we cannot compare you know the the the, the kind of the value of the the material value of the uh, golden medal, silver medal, bronze medal, but you know we. Uh, Olympic uh, spirit, you know, so definitely we cannot use this uh, dollar to uh, to evaluate, right? To measure, yeah. But you know, the 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 deliver message is, you know, remember uh, the gold medal is still an uh, alloy, right? So we have gold, we have silver. So for silver, even we have hundred percent silver, but remember the purity, the impurity. So it's kind of we have some solid solution in it to strengthen the mechanical properties, yeah. So this is the summary for uh, different uh, alloys. You know, we have this uh, copper alloy, you know, titanium alloy. Uh, uh, titanium alloy is an advantage. You know, we have this uh, really high uh, strength to weight ratio because the density is only 4.5 gram per cubic centimeter. Uh, uh, we have this aluminum alloy. We have magnesium alloy, and uh, we have this noble or uh, noble metals. Okay, so once we uh, we talk about the steel, we talk about the cast iron, we have kind of we have raw materials, right? Uh, but you know, if you want to use it, you, like uh, you want to uh, machine or fabric the engines, you know, pistols, you know, uh, no matter what kind of um, parts, you know, uh, structures, kind of we need to convert that uh, raw material into different structures, right? So then we need to follow. We need to use some techniques to fabricate, right? So the techniques, you know, we have that uh, forming operations, we have casting, we have miscellaneous, right? So we will talk about, you know, we will major, uh, we will focus on this uh, forming operations and the casting. So for, form, uh, for forming, you know, we have this uh, forging, we have rolling, we have extrusion, we have drawing. So let's uh, talk about each of them. So for forging, so uh, kind of we need to have a die, you know, you have this uh, plate or rod, you know, if you want to fabric the structure and the shape like this. So you need to fabric the die first. Um, then generally this, uh, uh, this uh, forging, this uh, forging, you have to increase temperature. So when you increase temperature, it will become a little bit soft, then you can forge. Otherwise, you know, if you forge at, uh, at room temperature, the, you know, it's really hard, then the die will deform, then the die cannot be repeatedly used, right? Cannot be repeatedly used. That's the reason, that's why, you know, for forging, you, we should always keep it at a high temperature hot, then we can forge, right? So uh, then you can have this structure. So for this uh, forging, uh, you, like uh, we will fabricate, you know, uh, wrenches, uh, crankshafts, you know, some other, uh, uh, structures, you know, we can use this uh, forging. Uh, another, uh, another three uh, uh, techniques, you know, we have rolling, extrusion, rolling, you can do it uh, hot or cold, you know, hot or cold, hot or cold, right? But, you know, remember this forging, you need to go to hot, you need to keep it at high temperature. So rolling, uh, I remember when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, cold working, we talk about this, uh, uh, rolling, you know, we, we talk about the drawing, right? So you have this plate and you know, you have two rows uh, rotate uh, against each other, then you can reduce the size, right? For die, you know, you kind of, uh, for this drawing, you just uh, pull this, this side and then the structure is uh, getting smaller, right? Uh, for this rolling, you can fabricate like uh, I-beams, reels and sheet and plates. And for this drawing, uh, you, you have to lubricate, right? because this one is fixed layer. So if you do not lubricate this one, could be uh, damaged and the die could be damaged. So this extrusion means, you know, uh, you put your material in it, uh, uh, then you have, you want to reduce the size, you, you, you push the materials uh, in, in it, right? So it will come out. 
So uh, generally this one, uh, we can fabricate, you know, the ductile, uh, ductile materials, uh, then you, otherwise if, if uh, the material is really brittle, then you cannot uh, guess uh, you, it will be broken. Uh, there, uh, if you are interested, you can open the link, YouTube link, and you can see how to perform this uh, forging, rolling, and extrusion and drawing. Okay. So for the uh, forming, you know, um, like uh, um, forging, we, we have to go to high temperature, you know, but rolling, drawing, and uh, um, extrusion, you know, we can do it, you know, uh, uh, at room temperature and the high temperature. So then there are several, you know, uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages, you know. When we perform cold working, you know, definitely kind of cold working, uh, uh, that means the strength hardness will increase, but, you know, we, we treat off uh, ductilities, right? Uh, materials might, you know, fracture if you, uh, we deform too much, right? That's uh, easy to understand. But hard working, the disadvantage is, you know, uh, because you go to high temperature, uh, you uh, remember this is steel, right? So it you may have an ox oxidation layer. So you have some oxidation, right? And also you you know you may because it's very hot, it's uh, soft. You know we, the surface will could be rough, right? You will lose the uh, final finish, right? Uh, but you know hard working definitely we can have large deformation. We we may uh, is. Uh, you, when you go to large deformation, you know the structure will not be could could not be break, uh, broken, right? So this uh, forming. Uh, so for forming, you know, if you have this, uh, you, you, this structure is not that complicated, right? So you can use a folding to get this structure. There's no problem, right? But think about, you know, if you have this engine, if you have a complicated part, you know, is it possible to use folding to fabricate? No, right? So you, you have a lot of holes, you know, pores. Uh, so this one, you cannot use the drawing, you cannot use uh, uh, rolling, you cannot use the extrusion, uh, and then you cannot use uh, forging. So then, but you know, actually in the uh, in our world, right, we have a lot of this uh, 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 sophisticated, you know, uh, structures, you know, parts. So how, how we can get it, right? This is the uh, costing. Costing, we can uh, make uh, uh, complicated structures, you know. Uh, so this one uh, for costing, generally we will melt. You have that liquid metal, you, you melt this metal at a high temperature. Then you have a mold. Then you can pour your liquid metal into the mold. After the liquid metal solidify, you will get a, a, a structure, okay. So this is the costing. Uh, for casting, we have a sand casting, we have continuous uh, casting, we have, uh, we have um, mm, uh, lots of form casting, we have several techniques we can use. Uh, so we will talk about, uh, briefly talk one by one, the sand casting, you know, apparently we need to use sand, right? So, but before that, you know, you, you will have a pattern like, you know, finally you, you want to, uh, cast these structures, you know, you fabric, you, you split this structure into half. Then you fabricate, uh, 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 kind of you duplicate using uh, 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 soft materials, you know, polymer additive, you know, something like that, you know, uh, you will fabricate the top uh, part, you know, bottom part, you, know, you see this is the top part, right? Then you put it into a container, kind of you can call it a flask, a place over the person pattern, this pattern, right? So kind of you put it into a container, then you put the sand in it. Then uh, that definitely the sand, you know, you put some additive, you know, make sure they will stay together rather than, you know, collapse, and, you know, when you remove this pattern, right? So you have this sand, you remove this pattern. So uh, then you, you have this uh, 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 mold, right? So the bottom part, you know, this is the top part, this is the bottom part, you have this structure. Then you pour this liquid metal in it. So after you solid, the, the liquid metal solidifies, so then you can shake out the sand easily, right? So then you have this uh, structure, you can cut it here, you have this uh, final structure. So this is the sand, okay, sand casting. 
the second one is the die casting. Die casting, you know, kind of we have a mold, right? Uh, my my daughters have this uh, pushing, you know, pop circle uh, mold. So you 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 have that uh, mold, right? You pour uh, uh, not liquid metal, definitely, right? So you pour, you know, uh, milk, you know, uh, yogurt, you know, uh, uh, water, you know, then you cool it down. So then you have this uh, pushing popsicle, uh, popsicle, right? Uh, so this uh, uh, this is the the kind of this uh, similar to die casting, but you know we don't we not talk about the metal, right? But when we talk about metal, you have you can have you know sophisticated or complicated the mold, like you you if you want to fabricate this structure, so you have this mold, you have bottom part, you have top part. Pour a metal in it, then put the in uh, put this top part into the bottom part. After this, you know, liquid metal solidifies. You you can remove the mold, and you have this structure. Okay, so this is a die casting. Uh, another one is invested casting. So invest the investment kind of uh, uh, uh you will uh, you help spend um uh. uh the, the 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 mold you know the pattern will cost uh, money right so you have this uh you can you can have this uh mold you will generate a a, a template this one is a template right uh, this is a template it's similar to the final structure so you uh, you have this uh you can use a wax to fabricate this uh, template right so then you fabricate many many pieces and you know, put them together so then you uh you put a slurry over it and you know put a, uh, another layer of materials uh, on it kind of waterproof or some other functions then the, because the wax is the melting temperature is only like uh, 45 or 50 degrees celsius right so when you uh feel you know more uh molten metals oh uh so then after after you have performed this uh, completed the mold right you increase temperature remember this uh the wax the melting temperature is only around 45 degrees or the 50 degrees Celsius when you increase temperature this uh, wax will melt out so then you have a uh, 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 empty chamber right so then you can pour the mo uh, molten metal in it so then after the solid fire, you can shake it out and you, you have this individual uh, structures. So this is, a, this is an investment, you know, casting. Uh, another uh, casting is a loss of form. Uh, so you can use the polymer, some other materials, you know, uh, the melting temperature is not that high. So you fabricate this, uh, this uh, form, this is the structure you want. Then you coat uh, similar to the investment uh, casting, you coat a layer of the something. Uh, then you pour sand in it. Then you just uh, uh, pour, uh, you you know, for the investment casting, you, you will uh, melt the wax out, right? But this one, because this, uh, this form can be melted at a high temperature, so you just uh, pour uh, liquid metal in it, this form will be gone. So after solidification, you can shake it out, you can get your structures. The last one is a continuous uh, casting. Uh, so kind of you have this uh, pipeline, you know, you pour uh, uh, liquid metal, you know, the liquid metal will flow in it, but you know, kind of it's uh, cooling automatically because it's a uh, room temperature, right? So getting lower and lower, then uh, almost a solidify finally so will solidify. So when you solidify, you, you can have this roller kind of pull it out. Uh, then you can cut the solid part. So you have that structure. So this uh, continue, uh, continuous casting is, uh, uh, is continuous, right? So you can get it uh, 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 quickly. Uh, so you just uh, cut the solid part out and you just uh, fill liquid in it. So uh, in uh, uh, plants, you know, uh, uh, iron plants, you know, you, you, they have this uh, kind of, uh, you, they use this uh, continuous casting to get, you know, uh, plate, you know, uh, rod and easily, okay. So that's uh, 
uh, casting, you know, the last part, you know, it's a miscellaneous, you know, technique, you know, uh, uh, if you have two parts, you know, you can weld, you can call, uh, you know, if we talk about, you know, uh, we can call solder them together, you can weld them together, you have two parts. So when you weld them together, uh, so this is uh, a uh, uh, melting liquid, uh, uh, liquid, uh, liquid uh, metal, so it will connect the two pieces together. But you know, there's a, a heat uh, effect zone, heat effect zone, there's a uh, fused base metal. So because you have liquid metal, this uh, solid metal here, you have liquid metal here. Uh, liquid metal is with a high temperature, so then it will cool down automatically, automatically. So kind of uh, you perform a heat treatment. So the different area may have different mechanical properties, right? So, uh, so the the parts might you know undergo uh, uh, may have that recrystallization and growing growth, you know, because you know here like around you know seven hundred you know nine hundred degrees Celsius. Here is uh, twenty three degrees Celsius. So you have that uh, temperature gradient. So. Uh, higher temperature, you may have, you know, green growth, you know, medium temperature, you may have, medium temperature zone, you may have recrystallization. Uh, so you have this, uh, uh, so we call this, you know, heat effect zone. Uh, so we, we, we talk about, you know, the, the uh, foaming, casting, you know, the, the major part, right, you know, welding, uh, you may you you may have uh, heat treatment. You, you may uh, we may have we may do it. You know uh, at a higher temperature we may do it at a lower temperature, right? For forming, like a folding, we go to high temperature. For uh, drawing, rolling, you know extrusion, we may go to a cold, uh, uh, lower temperature and a higher temperature. For casting, you know we have that liquid uh, uh, metal uh, solidify finally. So, and also the structure might be really big, right? Uh, the surface might, if you go to high temperature, the surface might cool down quickly, but the, the core part, you know, will cool down slowly. You can think about, you know, if you have big structure. So the mechanical property depends the cooling rate, right? You may get a different microstructure, then mechanical property will be different. That's why, if you want to get a uniform properties, or at least make sure it's, uh, it's the, the property is uniform a little bit more, right? We need to have that uh, post uh, heat treatment. Uh, that one we call that thermal processing of metals. So we call that uh, annealing. Uh, annealing means you know we go to high temperature, then we cool down to uh, uh, the room temperature automatically, or you cool down to. Uh, so it depends, depends, you know, uh, what kind of uh, property or what kind of purpose, you know, you want to, uh, you, you have. So generally for all alloys, you know, the left part, we have uh, two annealing. Uh, so the first one we call that a stress relief. Stress relief, that means, you know, you know, after this, no matter you have this uh, foaming or uh, casting, you know, all you have that's a plaster deformation uh, uh, or face transformation, uh, you may have some uh, lattice distortion, right? You may have lattice distortion. Stress relief, you know, we go to uh, a little bit lower temperature, like, you know, like 100, 200 degrees Celsius, you know, we keep at that temperature for uh, a while. Uh, then, if there's a lattice distortion, you know, the lattice might be restored. So then the stress, the uh, residual stress will decrease. So we call that, you know, stress relief, okay. Uh, another one is the press annealing. Uh, uh, a uh, uh, process annealing means, you know, like we perform that uh, forging, uh, we perform that uh, cold working, uh, we perform that uh, uh, casting, uh, uh, we may, you know, uh, we may have a lot of uh, dislocation in it, you know, uh, 
disorderliness, you know, once we process, you know, process this uh, needing, uh, like, uh, you know, recovery, uh, probably you, you guys know, you know, we go to like a 30% melting temperature, recrystallization, we go to 70% uh, melting temperature. So then we can uh, neg negate, you know, effect of cold working. So that means uh, the density of dislocations will decrease. So we, we reduce, you know, the, the effect of cold working, then we can restore ductility. So this uh, this this uh, stress relief or process uh, needing is good for all alloys, no matter it's ferrous alloy or non-ferrous alloy. And then we talk about a uh, 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 ferrous alloy, like talk about the steel. We have this uh, full annealing. So this one, when you have this, uh, uh, after you have completed this uh, casting or forming you increase temperature above 727 degrees Celsius, right? You convert all like a perlite and you know, graphite, you know, cementite, you know, uh, uh, ferrite, you know, bainite, mountainside, you know, right? No matter what you have, you go to 700, above 727 degrees Celsius. You convert all of them in austenite. Then you cool down in furnace. You do not, you do not get it out. It's cooled down automatically in furnace. It's just uh, slow, right? So you will get, you know, coarse perlite for steel, right? For steel, right? Not the cast iron. Um, so this is a full annealing. Uh, the final microstructure is a coarse, you know, perlite. And uh, you can have this as a variety of dieting, you know, if you have bainite, you know, perlite, you know, you go to 700 degrees Celsius, you know, keep it uh, between 18 to 24 hours. You will get this severe daddy. Normalizing means you know you go still, no matter what you have, you will go to about 700 degree, uh, 27 degrees Celsius. You convert all of them into, into gamma phase austenite. Then you take it out, and put it into air, in, in the air, in air. Then you the mag, the final max structure will become you know fine product. So we call this normalizing. So okay. Uh, so for the, uh, like, uh, you know, the heat treatment, you know, full annealing, you know, we can get a coarse perlite, you know, like we have this uh, coarse perlite, full annealing, right? Uh, we have austenite, 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 and then we have some uh, uh, perlite coming out, 50% perlite, you know, 100% perlite, you know, perlite, perlite. Quenching means we just uh, quench down to room temperature, uh, we have 100% mountain side. Tempering, you know, once we have mountain side, we go back to between 300 and 600 degrees Celsius for a few minutes, a few hours, then we can have that's the tempered mountain side, right? Uh, so this is uh, uh, the second last slide for today. We have this uh, hardened ability. Uh, I think I discussed this uh, uh, picture with you guys uh, previously. So when you have this uh, structure, you go to high temperature and then you use uh, uh, spray cold water on it, you know, then uh, this one will kind of rapid the cooling then slowly, 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 and really slow, right? So kind of, you know, this process, uh, you know, uh, treatment, you know, we will get, we will help us get different microstructures. So you may get a mountain set here, you may get a bayonet here, you may get a perlite here, right? So, you know, we know mountain set has the highest uh, hard, uh, hardness and the tensile strength, right? So then, then from the end of quenching and you have a higher hardness and then lower, then lower, lower, right? Similar here, the macro, the final macro, macro you have this part, you spray cold water here, so this one we will have rapid cooling, then moderate cooling, then slow cooling. Uh, then you may have like a mountain size, you know, mountain size plus perlite or bainite, you know, fan perlite, you know, coarse perlite. So that's uh, the, uh, so we need to uh, know based on different uh, temperature, time, and uh, how do you treat it? You just uh, spray hot water on one end or you spray water around it. You may get uh, different uh, microstructures, then you may get uh, different uh, mechanical properties. So that's really, really important, you know. 
in the future, if you guys in, if you guys you know work on um, steel, you know heat treatment, you know uh, no no matter you know what kind of metal. So heat treatment is really complicated, but really really useful. Yeah, I think this is uh, the the chapter the chapter uh, eleven. Uh, you know, uh, process process of uh, alloys. You know, we talk about uh, alloy, uh, ferrous alloy, non-ferrous alloy. We talk about the how to treat it. You know, uh, the heat treatment. You know, uh, the, the kind of we need to correlate with what we have learned. You know. Uh, different treatment will get different microstructures, you know, we may reduce the dislocations, you know, uh, so that's uh, really, really important. Okay, thank you guys.